Welcome, ladies and gents. I'm Dan the Man Munoz, host of Movie Menu Interviews, where we interview up and coming filmmakers, actors, and content creators to discuss their projects from idea to completion. I am joined by my co host, Mike Stan, and on today's episode, we'll be interviewing director, singer, actress, Jamie Lawrence. I'd like to welcome Jamie Lawrence to the show. Yay. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Yay. How's Hello. it going? Great. So the reason why we do this show is to talk about the process for future filmmakers, actors, and content creators out there, and for you to talk about what worked, what you would change for your next project, plus any advice you'd like to give to our listeners. So do you want to give a brief background about yourself? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm from L.A., uh, <laughs> or Van Nuys. Um, a as native, far as, yeah. yeah. We're Valley natives here, too. <laughs> I'll say like a lot, so, you know, that's why. As far as creating and, and video making and all that stuff, writing, I mean, I, I really don't remember a time when I, I mean, that sounds so cliche, but I really don't remember a time when I kind of wasn't doing something with my sister. I have an older sister. It's okay, sister. we're cliche here. <laughs> Be as cliche as Bring you'd it on. like. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably usually spearheading it. I remember being really young and, and doing videos to Grease, for example, or musicals that I loved and would be acting things out and our mom would help us shoot it. And, you know, that's like the performance side. But then as I got older, I was obsessed with making music videos with my sister in the garage and I would kind of mastermind them. And we oh, would, awesome. it was really fun. And I loved, I mean, we just do one shot. It's not like I was thinking of it in terms of anything remotely like, crew like or anything it was just like i'm performing and singing along and we would recreate scenes from indiana jones or you know and we That's would play amazing. things like that so that was like when i was 10 which scene uh, the scene when they're talking about ships that pass in the night you know sean connery and him and his dad he's he's like confronting his dad That's in awesome. the last who, crusade who did you play? i was sean connery oh, amazing. <laughs> my sister had the indie hat she had a whip from halloween and so i was like very pleased to do voices of sean connery <laughs> i loved performing and i was acting as a little kid and classes and theater so I just loved making voices and doing stupid characters and I had funny glasses you know so any chance I so we're doing all of that I also got into doing tape to tape edits like we had two tape decks in my den Wow, and the kids of today don't, they know, don't this know what struggle. the hell. It's so sad because it was really a challenge it was really you felt like no, you were I really doing something editing. yeah it was really kind of, now I look back on it, eye-opening. So I was like, wow, you just have this like amazing ability to just create anything you want. Like <laughs> I was doing montages of, I had a big crush on Ishmael Valdez from the Dodgers. Like oh. I did montages of him or anyone I liked from any movie. Um, I was like the Beatles, whatever. And I would just splice together these like, like 10 to 20 of the same shot, for example, of like Paul McCartney in Help <laughs> or Hard Day's Night where he looked so cute. And I was like, oh my God. And then I put like a music over it about you know like a pop song of loving the guy or whatever and so that was my first entrance in like editing and all that and i would get really into that um uh, thank you beatles yes yeah. thank you <laughs> thank you paul, thank you, paul. <laughs> but i never thought of it as oh i'm really doing something here i just was like this is where i'm you know i'm killing my time this way then little it, did you know little did yeah. i know <laughs> in college then i was like I wasn't focusing on any of this and then uh, my sister is a film major at UCSC in Santa Cruz and she edited go slugs yeah <laughs> that's like the pulp fiction reference too there you could throw that in because um, <laughs> of his shirt yeah. um, my sister she was a filmmaker so I was acting in her movies and had a lot of fun and kind of got to see this whole other side and kind of interested in that but she I remember distinctly kind of like a key thing of that got me into it was um she was in the editing bay and I visited her just to hang out she was there you know for hours and I just was like this is amazing what are you doing and she was splicing film for the class and then after that it was on my mind a lot and I got inspired I mean you said brief background I'm realizing no, now no, so no, I'm no, like no. Okay, keep going keep it going um from that basically that was lodged in my brain then but I, I still was sort of brewing in the background and then I was in college and kind of not knowing what I was doing I struggled a lot and and I, I left Santa Cruz I was at UCLA and I was there for a little bit I was an art major for a very brief amount of time and I was also in Santa Cruz around a lot of like a boyfriend was an artist my sister's friends were all artists she was a film student so, surrounded by the cool, art culture yeah I was like oh and, and they were always so inspiring and I had this I always have ideas 
too many ideas usually and I I had this idea that oh I have so many interesting people I'd love to just do a video project like my mind always kind of goes to video or just for some reason probably because of just being a kid and doing that I guess I was like I just want to interview all these interesting people I know and just which will go to your YouTube channel which is on gem, exactly gem, uh, youtube.com jamlaw jamlaw exactly the yeah, first three I saw letters that video. <laughs> that was a really cool video oh thanks <laughs> uh, go on continue I, it was just an idea and I had the idea for years and years and you know I like leave college and life is happening and whatever and kind of acting and depressed and trying to do commercials and then I was dating a guy and I was telling him about this idea I had of interviewing all these friends and he's like you should do it you know he's a really very inspiring person in terms of just getting things done and supportive. it was very yeah and and he's into doing filmmaking and all this and post-production so his encouragement I was like you know he's right so from that it was like that click moment where I then taught myself my dad bought I don't remember the exact order but my dad bought me Adobe Premiere which was super amazing and I learned editing oh oh even before that actually I used iMovie my friend oh, yeah. who's a filmmaker <laughs> I used iMovie to edit cobble together this thing I called six questions which was that idea I had from years ago in college which was amazing to finally finish something I see myself as someone who doesn't understand the concept of having a home and throughout my travels and throughout all the places I've lived I've never felt completely able to relate necessarily to the people who live there or the way that people live their daily lives there and I have a certain amount of jealousy for people who have who have homes um, I see myself as um, kind of nervous and uh, you mean right now or in general in general I see myself um, as an, kind of an outgoing kind of guy but I do like my personal space and uh, I'm creative and I'm funny when I try really really hard to be that was the first time I was really like an adult, you know, finishing and knowing what I was doing. <laughs> was uh, your idea from beginning to exactly completion. like I had a vision, and now what I made it happen, and oh, that feels nice. Uh, so yeah, that that's was always the best feeling. Such oh my god, I would get, I will get on a roll with that later. That really kicked off, and then inspired a lot by boredom, and then other people I knew who were filmmaking students who I'd see, I'm like they're doing stuff. I may be at home, I may not know what I'm doing, I may be kind of lost in my life, but I'm gonna be doing something, damn it, you know. And so I would like get my camera and just do anything that came to my mind, and that was like kind of as that's like leads me up, I guess, enough to now. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about your YouTube channels. If you so, we talked about yes. Jam Law the first one, and then there's also Musical Onion. And Musical Onion. And there's also Skip Parade. Yes. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about Gem Law. Gem what Law. To on there. That is kind of my nickname for my friends in a way. Um, anything I do, I'm just going to throw in here. So basically, I've categorized it's it. your filmography almost. Yeah, like. in a way. It was like my little <laughs> website idea. It's skits or sketches or things I've taken time, things I've done just for in an hour where I'm going out of my mind board and I act like an idiot or it's <laughs> <laughs> a little parody, I thought, or a dance. I'd choreographed a dance piece and it was filmed for a dance showcase I was in and that's on there, you know, like well, any basic kind of video project I've ever imagined is on there or will be on there. The very, very vast array of uh, styles, I think, and types. <laughs> I mean, maybe not in a good way. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to get your whole background and keep it all fresh on one site. So you yes. can always be called to it like, when yes. you move on to your next project. It does, yeah, it feels good because I do have music videos on there and I kind of see that my own evolution of like, oh, wow, I was really into that phase, you know, and now I have these things and that worked or didn't. I have like my own little you review. Show, like a progression of right. where you started to where you are moving right. on. Right, so and I know it's there and I'm always like, that's Jam Law's there and I load anything up there when I just want to feel like I've done something, I, I put it out in the world, you know, and that's my thing I did, you know. <laughs> now, uh, talking and about Musical Onion? Musical Onion is my music site on YouTube because I love music, I write music, I occasionally make music videos which I actually is one of my favorite things in terms of editing and stuff so I created a site called musical onion on YouTube for music only so it's like I'll have my live performances I'll have a video I've done of myself it's me you know it's my music stuff and that's I don't use as often but I enjoy knowing that's there as well that's good <laughs> yeah so check out um, the musical performances of Jamie also there's also skip parade 
Skipper 8 is a very precious idea in my mind. I haven't yet done a lot with it, but it's I only have two sketches up there now, and I'm hoping to... I love the name. I'm so Skipper glad. I know. I'm so proud thing. of that name. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I it love that It just rolls name. off the tongue, and you know exactly what you're getting into when you click on it. Skipper oh, thanks. I, I'm so glad you like it, because I was so... <laughs> I doodled that name multiple times, and had I was like, oh, Skipper 8, and I was like, I should do something with it. No, I'm a little jealous <laughs> that I didn't think of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That idea started with the coconut song by Harry Nilsson, and I always yeah, just yeah, brilliant. <laughs> oh, thanks. Brilliant. And the song is—it's so funny to me, and I love that song. And I was listening to it's it. It's such a kooky song. It's a kooky song, and it's like I heard it in my mind one day, and I was like, my friend Todd, who's in the video, is hilarious, and he's always makes me laugh. And I was imagined him for some reason when I was listening to the song doing that, and I just got this idea like I would love to do all these sketches where I verbatim take like the challenge of taking verbatim. Uh, lyrics and creating a scene out of that what could I do with that and that's the spawn of you know let's get parade and I ideally I have so many I've written I haven't shot yet but I will put them on there when I'm done well you will get it on there I, I hope I, I like that you, you have you enthusiasm for me like, <laughs> you will <laughs> just believe all just right so right now we like to tell our listeners to make sure to go to those YouTube channels in order to uh, watch the skits we're about to talk about on youtube.com slash jamlaw we'll talk about how to meet women so go ahead and talk about that skit first that one is a fun one because that was the first time and maybe one of the only major times I collaborated with maybe more than one person uh, my friend in, creati- in creating it in creating it my friend wrote it his name is Brad Austin he's a funny comedian he lives in New York I met him at UCB and, oh, uh, UCB, that UCB. place is great. Oh, it's the best. And that's where I know Corey from as well, Corey Zerby. But you guys remember listeners who we interviewed not that long ago, Corey Zerby. The great Corey Zerby. It's like we all were friends or and like me and this other guy, Patrick Reynolds, and Brad hung out and we're just creating these ideas in our head and sketches. And at this point, I was like, I really want to practice directing or at least doing something where I'm not just trying to do my own thing. And so Brad had this thing that he wrote, which I thought was hilarious. And I was like, oh, fun. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. And we kind of just dove in and got we're in a little over our heads because we shot at a cafe while it was going. We had my friend <laughs> Ted at a boom mic who was so helpful, but it was like we got we. I was just like, what are we doing? And I'm like learning about. It's called guerrilla filmmaking. It's great, so yeah. It's the best time. <laughs> it was fine because you kind of don't know what you're in for, and then you're already committed. So you're like, all right, well, cool. We're gonna make it work, you know. And it's awesome. You have other people who are passionate about the project as well who want to help. So it's fun. It is fun, and it's that's key because then you know everyone is in it, and you know, and that was what's so fun is I got to work with my friends who I think hilarious because they both were in it patrick and brad and uh they just were fun and easy you know because they're my friends you know that they're gonna be funny and it was obviously a challenge because patrick kind of co-directed it with me and we were both holding the camera and kind of trying to figure out what we were doing and i think i had done all these little breakdowns of like how to shoot the shots and we're dealing with crazy sound and kind of came together i guess (laughs) (laughs) i don't know how to meet women Every girl I've ever dated has been someone that I know. I'd like to just go up to a girl and just snuck her off her feet. You, you, want, you, want, you want a snocker? I was, I was going to say sweep, and then I changed my mind. Yeah, sweep, sweep's nicer. Yeah, see, I should have my first idea. You see? That's why I can't meet women, because I always second-guess myself. I'll tell you what, I'll teach you how to cold call. You will? Yeah, it's easy. I'm proud of it more because I think Brad wrote it, and so I feel like, all right, well, that's a solid script. And the script, if nothing else, makes me laugh. And I feel like it was at least somewhat represented oh, the way great. we were hoping. Yeah, Listeners, please check it out. It's really good. <laughs> uh, also talk about Own It. Oh, Own It. Yeah. I mean, any of these, basically any of these ones like Own It on my Jamla channel. It's one I did that was very therapeutic. It was one of those ones similar to any of the ones I've done that kind of got me into doing any video making or in that it was like, I have a feeling and I'm going nuts. I'm cooped up in my apartment. And so I wrote it out and I just kind of came out. It was like a nice, easy thing. I had it for a while and then got in a stage where I was wanting to shoot and rediscovered it. And I'm like, what? I'm like, this is funny. I should just do this. Why am I doing anything? So then I did the, which I realize now is like the classic YouTube person thing to like be talking to yourself. <laughs> and I, it was an excuse to be really hammy and do all these characters, but all, there's nothing wrong you know, with that. No, I, no not at all. For. I love, I mean, that's, I love being hammy. And bread, I, bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, this little theater girl, you know. Well, like, I I really like that one because usually what I'll do is I'll kind of throw caution to the wind. I'll jump in. I'm not really prepared, and I kind of just want to get something done. But this is like I had to start to finish, and even though there's zero production value, I was very clear about, like, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that. 
and that was satisfying. That's good. It's always good to have a vision. It's it helps a lot. It yeah, it helps. <laughs> and then you're you know you have a something you hang your hat on, and I felt good too because it was like a distinct voice of I'm this age or I have these feelings, and even if it seems silly now with myself looking back, like anything, it's still like oh that's a moment in time where I was expressing a feeling, which to me is kind of like a baseline for almost anything I do I always like to be unless it's straight comedy it's just for fun like I like having a little bit of like a something where I'm getting something out I'm expressing like being raw and being truthful to the, truthful. To the audience exactly and it helps me it's my therapy <laughs> so it's that one was best big therapy. time <laughs> it really is it's the cheapest therapy there is, it is so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is good now real quick what made you want to get into UCB and start doing sketch comedy UCB was an inspiration because I was living at my mom's and this was like I had just broken up with said guy from previous comments and I was depressed and I was moving out. I moved out and was living in Los Feliz and I was just like, I want to do something. I need to get out. And I love, you know, I've always loved performing and I kind of wanted to get into a more of a social thing. So I took UCB and they have that thing where they're like, don't think, just click or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, so I do it. <laughs> and I did just two of those, but it was great because I met Brad and Corey and this guy Patrick and it led to things and friendships and as far as sketch though I never took sketch I've never taken any kind of sketch writing I basically just all natural yeah very all natural <laughs> <laughs> organic I'm very um kind of like huh you know like I was it's a really interesting question because I was thinking about that I'm like how the hell did I why do I do this you know and I really don't know other than just it's what I want to do I like doing it and I've been writing forever and that's when you know you should be doing it if that, that's all you can think about doing then you, you know, know that's, that's it's it. true it is a nice barometer when you get a little lost and you're like wait I really love this why am I just not doing it and I wrote a lot when I was younger poetry and all the you know anything and writing in school and so I think naturally just through the avenues of life and then being UCB and being inspired by so many people and watching videos and getting more and more into you know I'm spending my time learning about more comedy and watching fun things and meeting new people and introducing me to things that are inspiring me my writing then became affected as I wanted to channel something I enjoy doing into like new things like what would that be to write a sketch or what is the difference between having an idea because I have so many ideas I have a little skip book that is filled with ideas and it's sometimes I'm like god what is what would that be like if I took this idea and took it seriously and didn't just do a one-off crazy thing you know in my bedroom or whatever so I think once I started thinking that way and hanging out with people who were doing it and and watching more things I just I just kept Progress. doing it yeah, yeah I just would do it to kill time and would write and I'm very and not now you're growing I'm growing yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I forget to write and, uh, and stuff but I it is fun because I actually was talking to Corey about skits and sketches and I really didn't know the difference and I was like I was like I don't know I don't know I just say skit and then uh, there's very clearly a difference and so I get a little now I'm like oh I really, you know, if I'm going to write a sketch, it's very different, you know. But fortunately, I don't have any kind of training, and I find that freeing because I'm like, I'm just doing whatever the heck the I guess. to you. Yeah. Which and what you find funny and right. what you like. And that's key, and it, it's fun. It's nice because I don't overthink it, which I overthink in life. So I kind of like not thinking like, oh, that's shoot, am freeing. I breaking a rule here? You know, I'm, which is bad in some ways probably, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it is freeing, yeah. When you started doing more acting, did you? Did that come off also with the singing? Did you just always been singing your whole life? No. Or did you do take mm. classes with singing? I did take classes. What happened with singing was I've been acting my whole life. Same thing. I just was doing it as a kid. So that's just kind of always in and out of my life. Singing was never taken seriously ever. I never thought about it until roughly 10 years ago. I love singing. I love musicals for fun and stuff. But I like as a kid you know I'm singing Disney in the shower things like that but I I wasn't normal thinking, we normal, all did it very normal I especially did. when you have red you hair and your little mermaid yeah <laughs> we all sang Little Mermaid too <laughs> singing Under the Sea in the oh yeah outside, oh the is storm. that your song Mike that is Under the Sea yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> I love sure. it in an alternate universe I'm in the shower singing little, like the Little Mermaid part and you're Sebastian <laughs> That's great. So and now Ursula. No, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I don't know why. Oh, my God. As a side, I felt so bad. This reminds me of a side note. My aunt, is. I love my aunt. She's a very husky voice. And as a kid, I made the mistake of telling her she reminded me of Ursula. <laughs> it's she one of never those, forgot one it. One of those little kid insults. You don't right. realize you're insulting You don't realize. Yeah, you don't look so at the in character. Your head, that's like a compliment. But like, yeah. realistically, they're like, what? She's I like fat you. and old and horrible. You know what I mean? I like you because you're fat and old. <laughs> Evil. Oh God! I know that's how she heard it. <laughs> Poor Cindy. Well, go ahead and continue. Anyway, so yes, I um, 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 um. All right. So singing, I 
I got into songwriting, I mean, you know, roughly maybe 10 years ago. No, more like 12 years ago, um, more like thinking about it. And so as I did that, I became more interested in what is my voice? How do I sound myself? I mean, it's such a long journey with the voice. I mean, figuratively and literally and all of those things. But I singing these songs and thinking like, in some ways not thinking about it at all and then the more I got into it the more I wanted to sound a way I felt or I wanted to emulate it like Freddie Mercury or or I wanted to do something that I couldn't do artistically and so that drove me to take more cl I've taken classes at GCC and LACC and various DVDs I would find online you know <laughs> and I was always searching for something outside and a lot of those things were really helpful actually and fun various coachings it was all very hodgepodgey you know, these dream I had these dreams of like taking this intensive musical theater course and like shutting everything else out of my life, but I've never done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I've just been, yeah, singing a lot just as I've been doing my songs, training also myself and challenging myself that way too. And so it do, wasn't connected to acting so much. Sketches in the future? I would love to. <laughs> my dream is to make a musical. Have you seen those people who do like the if Disney characters were real? Oh, like I, I think so. Wait, I'm thinking more of like a art thing. I don't oh, know okay. if I know what that is. They do them like they're like live. Yeah, like they're oh, real really? people. Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. In the, in the real world. And scene. they're singing. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. See, anything. Just everything <laughs> when you talk about Disney, it made me think of that. No, it's great because to me, that's the beauty of musicals. Is that if for me at least, the fantasy of like being able to just live your life like that, like that movie Fifty Days of Summer, or what was that movie? Oh, yeah, awesome. I, I thought it was interesting. Five hundred days. Five hundred days. Like, yeah. I was like, fifty's not long enough. <laughs> I really like that movie overall because I really love that whole scene where he's dancing the street and I'm like I want to be like that all the time like that's kind of my <laughs> irrational yet hopeful side I don't know what it is I love that and I love that about musicals and so I yeah I would love to do a sketch or something what's right? some of your favorite musicals <gasps> Singing in the Rain is the all time official oh, that's great that's a good one um, I love Jesus Christ Superstar so much I love it so much I love hair I love a lot of those rock opera stuff I love the 60s the and the 70s kind. yeah and I love that music I guess Andrew Lloyd Webber you know I'm drawn to him when I was younger I really loved Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat <laughs> well I liked once a lot I love it's so funny I always blank on this because I have like this influx of like musicals I mean those are the main ones I would say I like a lot of the older they don't seem like musicals but the Fred Astaire movies where you know, with the Cole Porter songs and Ginger Rogers. I love all of that stuff so much. Moulin classics. Rouge. Yeah, classics. And I loved Moulin Rouge, um, even though the music wasn't written for that, you know. It was contemporary music. Yeah. To music. Yeah, yeah it, it was great. It was a crazy idea, though. It was good. You're also recording an album right now, right? Yes, I uh, am. So go ahead and talk about that. <laughs> that is a very labor of love. Um, I, I've, I did an album a few years ago. Well, it was like this collective thing where I had all these songs I've been writing since about 2003. And I was like, I have to freaking do an album, you know. Can I curse in here? Oh, sure. Okay. Go ahead. I have to go. do a fucking album. <laughs> <laughs> we'll boost up fucking. Yeah. We'll have Get like the bass. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Make things rattle. Like, 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 oh. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. So I, I uh, yeah, I was like, I have to do that. And then that happened and blah, blah, blah. And then I still have just so many songs. This current song, and I, you know, I've missed doing that. I haven't been performing or doing anything. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do another album that'll keep me busy. It's called Handsome because I wrote this song called Handsome a, a while ago, but I hadn't put it on my first album. And I love that song. It's just a personal song to me. And I mean, they're all personal, but. I'll write another song for you. It may be wrong to want you still, I do. Handsome, handsome. I think about your skin at night, and the ink inside it terrifies me. Come terrified. so lonely last time I hate how lovely that made you handsome 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 we've had a lot of last times I haven't lost a lonely day dreaming handsome 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 Someday I'll be that Disney princess Handsome, 
this idea because I dated somebody for a very long time and he's basically my muse it's the only one I read <laughs> like, I, you know I, it's like I see him as that a lot because I've written so many more songs about him than anything else you know that's where a lot of the emotional catharsis comes from right so I have all these songs that are this kind of rising and falling in different stages of my life and this relationship and feelings and growing and blah 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 so I thought god i just really want to do one called handsome because that was like my pet name for him and you know not to be too whatever but (laughs) um and it also represents other things in terms of the idealized version of of a man versus reality and and all these things that i can't get into now probably but um so yeah so now that the quest is i'm going through all these old songs a lot are just i've never recorded or their demos so I'm filtering through all of them and re-recording them to get the sound to be all the same. But the challenge is some of them I'm singing songs that are like seven years old. And I'm like, geez, I don't, like I either don't connect to it anymore or I get reinvested and I'm feeling all the things again. And I'm like, oh, I can't get this out. You know, so it's a it's a fun process to kind of <laughs> weed all that out. <laughs> when do you expect it to be? Uh, December 1st. December 1st. December 1st is my is my deadline to myself. I'm, I'm pretty much done recording. I'm adding little vocals and I'm kind of retuning my idea. I was going to do just straight because I play piano, very simple piano. And I was just, in the past, I've enjoyed doing little production things where I'm trying my hand at producing and doing different sounds and stuff but this I want to just do me and piano I'm just gonna bare my soul and that's like the theme of but I find that I can't resist doing a few little things Things so yeah I'm kind of in that stage where could the listeners find the album uh if they wanted to get it on December 1st they'll be able to find it or probably maybe after that given like the released stuff um iTunes Spotify it'll be on my band camp which is jamielawrence.bandcamp.com my first album my side of your story is on all those as well so oh, they can cool. kind of get a sense of my sound check it out <laughs> listeners now finally any projects you're going to be working on soon video wise that maybe people can help with where can they reach you to assist in any way well my can? address is uh <laughs> no um, <laughs> 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 i have uh, a couple projects that i have been wanting to like i keep saying i'm gonna do this and i haven't but i do have a sketch coming that i wrote with Corey. i do have a sketch i wrote with him that i really had a lot of fun writing so I want to do that, and I, it would be nice to have some help because there's just enough more work and things to take on in that one that I've done that it would be fun to have help. Like a, the crew? The crew, yeah, crew. And also skip parades, any of the skip parades, I really would love to have a solid group of people where we kind of do ideally my mind once a month is my like dream you know like oh like a writer's room yeah like we have or like and and i have a lot of ones i've written and then yeah in the future like to collaborate on writing them and then just getting them kind of done in a day or two every month and come together with my little vision you have the two um well, the Wanderer, which Corey is in. Yes. And then you have Lime and the Coconut. Yeah, which, the Coconut song. Great. So, and I do have, yeah, I have a lot of like stockpiled songs. So make sure to check out those YouTube channels. I want to say thank you so much, Jamie, for You're being welcome. part of our interview today. Thank you. Thank that you, was Mike. great. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, Mike. as the mic falls. <laughs> I didn't mean to almost kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, yeah, thank you very much, Jamie. You're welcome. Oh, is there anything last minute you want to promote before we, we end this, by the way? Yeah, one thing promoting-wise is it's not done yet, but I'm going to do a music video with a friend of mine who makes puppets and Muppets. and it's That's amazing! Right? It sounds really fun. So I'm really looking forward to that. So look for that on my musical onion. I'm hoping to kind of time it around with my album release roughly in the next five months or six months I don't know but he handcrafts these Muppets so I want to do kind of a Harry there's a Harry Nilsson video I love where he's singing with himself mixed with like an old school Sesame Street or Muppet vibe kind of thing so that's if you like that kind of thing I guess look for that oh, we do here yay <laughs> so we'll be looking forward to it as you listeners should be looking forward to it too any last minute advice you want to give to our listeners about the process of creating content and writing sketches or, yeah. or scene well gosh with creating stuff the couple things that came to mind was doing it like comedy wise and writing if you're laughing at it 
I was just talking about this uh, with, with somebody. If you're laughing at it, then I think it's a good sign. Just go with it. If it makes you laugh, be inspired by it. Just run with it. Write it. Don't worry about it. Worry about refining it later or getting feedback or whatever. Make yourself laugh. It's always a good thing. Because even if it, I feel like either way, you don't know if somebody's going to like something you do. You can't be thinking of that. I, I have to remind myself yeah, that all the time. Yeah, you can't. Because comedy is subjective, but as long as you're happy with it, that's all that matters. Really. No, exactly. And you got to go from that point. Because that point, at least, you know, even if I'm one random dumb person who thinks this is funny, no one else does. There's, You know there's got to be one more person like you that's going to connect. And that, to me, is worth it. So it's a nice thing to kind of focus on. I think with music... My main thing would be to stay honest and to be honest as possible. I think there's so much musically speaking that I don't know, like musician and, and craft wise, but I feel like sometimes that gets in the way. I think it's an amazing freedom thing, which I wish I had, but I also think sometimes it can overwhelm people and they're going, well, what chord should I do? Or what should I make this sound like? Rather than what am I feeling that I want, where I want this to go and I'm going to use my craft to go there, you know? So I think it's staying honest to what you want to say and express. But I was also going to say advice wise, edit, like get into liking editing. So that's one thing It's like, don't be afraid of editing. If you know editing, it will help you when you're shooting. <laughs> editing is always good to know. Yeah, it helps. All right. Thank you so much. Make sure to check out moviemanyreviews.com for movie news and reviews. Make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes and SoundCloud, as well as email us if you'd like to be featured on Movie Menu Interviews at moviemenuinterviews at gmail.com. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Take care. See you later. Bye. I called you baby in my bed You never knew how much that meant To have you baby in my bed Baby, called me almost every day you would but Little things made you such a good man In such a simple way For you, baby Baby, you called me baby in your bed A little thing and yet you said it to me A romantic I came then Baby, I cried out every time you changed between The man you were and the one I wanted you to be so badly Cause baby, I've got a lot to learn I thought I knew it all Maybe you were just too immature for me, baby worth living in